AQA, A-level physics, gravitational fields. This bit of the specification is what we're going to be doing. So, big question. What keeps the planets going round the sun? What keeps the moon going round the earth? And before Newton, we really didn't know. Um, it was thought that all of these planets going round the earth were on crystal spheres. And these spheres uh, were carried around by angels. And basically, we didn't know. Scientifically, we didn't know. People like uh, Galileo and Kepler and Tycho Brahe and a few others did the maths and they, they knew, I mean, Kepler's laws of planetary motion uh, are very impressive and describe the motion of the planets, but we didn't know what keeps the planets going around the sun or what keeps the moon going around the earth. Now, what Newton realized, which was very, very clever, was uh, that when an apple falls to Earth, there is an attractive force towards the Earth, which we call gravity. And people have known that for a long, long time, because it's pretty obvious that the apple is pulled down uh, towards the Earth. Um, what Newton realized was that perhaps that was the same force that keeps the moon in orbit around the Earth. Because to keep the moon going in a circle, you need a centripetal force, and perhaps that centripetal force was gravity. And then uh, building on the work of other people, using the data from other people, Newton came up with his universal law of gravitation. And that is that all masses attract all other masses. And the force of attraction is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. In other words, uh, if you've got two masses, M1 and M2, then the force is proportional to M1 times M2 divided by R squared, where R is the distance between their center of masses. Now, proportional to, we can put a constant in there, and the constant is big G. Big G. Ironically, big G is actually very small. It's 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. That's Newton's universal gravitational constant. That's big G. Newton didn't have a value for big G. He just realized that the force was proportional to M1, M2 of R squared, but he couldn't actually work anything out because he didn't have a value for big G. To get a value for big G, you need to actually measure the force between two masses, and Newton wasn't able to do that. However, use that equation now, do this sum, a little practice sum for you to do. Uh, and I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. So it was actually somebody called Cavendish. Henry Cavendish did a very clever experiment and it was a hundred years after Newton came up with his theory. Um, and Cavendish did an experiment to find a value for big G. Okay, so now we know 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, and because it is so small, gravitational forces are tiny. Unless very large masses like planets and stars are involved, uh, gravitational forces are very, very tiny. Here is uh, the Earth, and surrounding the Earth, we imagine something called a gravitational field. And a gravitational field is a region of space where masses experience forces. In A-level physics, you're gonna do gravitational fields, you're gonna do electric fields, you're gonna do magnetic fields, okay? It's a region of space, like a three-dimensional region of space where masses experience forces. And we can represent uh, the gravitational field of the Earth 
with a diagram like this by drawing field lines. And these field lines tell us a lot about the field. They tell us that it's non-uniform because the, the closer together the lines are, the stronger the field. And the arrows tell us something as well. They tell us the direction of the field. Yeah, the arrows show the direction of the force that would act on a mass. And that is the definition of the direction of the field. It's the direction of the force which would act on a mass in the field. And then how close together the lines are gives us an idea of how strong the field is. So this diagram tells us that the closer to the earth you are, the stronger the field. So the strength of the field, what do we mean by the strength of the field? Well, it's the force that would act on unit mass. Now in the SI system, our units of mass is the kilogram. So it's the force in newtons that would act on a kilogram. So little g is F over M. That is the definition of little g. It's the force that would act on a kilogram. It also happens to be the acceleration due to gravity, but in this context, I'm not bothered about that. So little g is F over M. Now, if we combine that with the equation we had before from Newton's universal law of gravitation, if M1 is the mass of the Earth, and we call that big M, uh, and then if M2 is a kilogram, if, little, if M2 is just little m, uh, then we get little g equals gm over r squared. And this tells us how we can work out little g, the field strength, at different distances from the center of the Earth. Little g is gm over r squared. Look at this graph. This is how little g varies with distance as we move away from the Earth. You don't need to know what happens inside the Earth. We could have a discussion about it, but it would be pointless. You don't need to know. Outside the Earth, it follows what we call an inverse square law. This is something that you come across quite a lot in physics, an inverse square law. And that basically means that if you double the distance, so going from r to 2r, the field goes from about 10 to about 2.5. If you treble the distance, then it's a ninth because it's 1 over 3 squared. Some people think, you know, people in the space shuttle in space are weightless. Well, they're not weightless, actually. There's quite a bit of gravity acting on them. OK, if there wasn't gravity acting on them, then there wouldn't be an orbit. They just fly off at a tangent. So uh, there is plenty of gravity in space. You have to get very, very far away from the Earth or anything else for it to be actually weightless. OK, here's a couple of questions for you to have a go at. There's the mass of the Earth, the radius of the Earth. Use that data to calculate the gravitational field strength at the surface of the Earth. I mean, guess what the answer is going to be before you do it. Uh, and then there's another question about uh, at a particular distance from the Earth. Uh, stop the video, pen, paper, calculator, and the answers are. There you go. OK, the, the satellite in the second question happens to be, you might remember from geo, uh, a geostationary orbit. Yes, from GCSE. We'll talk about them later on in another video. Um, so there you go.